I don't know about you, but I was born into a Western society that glorifies something that is often referred to as grind culture. For the non-millennials among us, slang.net defines grind culture as an environment that promotes incessant working. Grind culture is the belief that people must work hard and be productive to prove their worth. Last month, I started a sermon series going through the themes of the Ten Commandments and how they apply to our lives today. Today, we're looking at remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. But in the scheme of all Ten Commandments, this one seems the least intuitive for me to preach on. I don't know if that's because it feels hypocritical, since I personally can be kind of bad at following it, and I'm aware of the irony of finishing the sermon at mumble o'clock in the morning. Maybe it's because so many of the people I spend time with are retired, which makes the separation between work and rest harder to define. Maybe it's because the world around us doesn't always consider rest to be something virtuous or productive or valuable. It's almost certainly some combination of all of the above. How can I tell anyone to rest when I'm already so busy telling them to seek justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with God? How can I tell anyone to rest when I keep saying that Mondays are my Sabbath day, but I almost always tag on a semi-snarky allegedly onto that statement because I'm only successful in keeping the Sabbath day maybe three weeks out of four. How can I tell anyone to rest when most of us are constantly in the presence of the modern miracle of technology that is the smartphone, a handy device that is so excited to inform us of yet another email or text, and oh, hey, just a reminder, you haven't used this app recently, and do you think it's time to sort through your photos and archive some so you have more space? And also, have you taken enough steps today? For the record, this is never actually up here. It's in my office, but I needed it as a prop. Rest is hard when you live in a society that has essentially made work or productivity or busyness or grind culture into an idol. Our second scripture reading this morning comes to us from the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verses 8 through 11. Hear now the word of the Lord. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. For six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work. You, your son or your daughter, your male or female servant, your livestock, or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus said that all the laws boil down to two things, love God and love your neighbor. The Ten Commandments given to the Israelites all fall under those two headings. Worship only one God. Don't create idols. Don't put words in God's mouth that God didn't say. The first three commandments are about what it might look like to love God. Support your family, don't murder, don't commit adultery, don't steal, don't lie, don't covet. The last six commandments are about what it might look like to love our neighbors. Except that we're not actually looking at two columns, we're looking at a Venn diagram, because the fourth commandment falls into both categories. Because we love and honor and remember God, we will set aside a day every week not just for ourselves, but for the land, for our animals, and for our households. And this commandment asks us to set aside time in our lives to honor God, to remember our creator, to remember our place in the universe, to remember the stories of people who went before us, to remember where we came from. The Israelites are specifically asked to remember their time in slavery. Don't forget the scars that make you who you are. Don't get so comfortable that you become complacent. 
Don't forget that there was a time when you needed to rely on others. Don't pretend that everything has been easy or pretend that no one else has had it as hard as you have. Don't stop being grateful. Remember that God was with you on both sides of the Red Sea and all the way through it. Remember that you are just one part of a story that has been told for more generations than we could follow. Remember the story we tell, that at the very beginning, God created us and called us not just good, but very good. God called us very good at the very beginning, not because we had achieved anything or created anything or learned anything. God called us very good, not for what we had done or for what we could do. God called us very good for who we are. God has loved us since the beginning, without condition, without having earned it, without even returning it. Remember that our God loves us, and not just us, but everyone, no exceptions. Remember that our God has a capacity for love and grace and creation far beyond anything that we could ever imagine. Remember. And don't just remember in passing like a sticky note reminding you to return a library book. Don't just remember when someone else brings it up. Don't just remember at some holiday. Don't just remember on the Sundays when you're able to participate in a worship service at home or in a church building. Don't work your resources to death. God created the earth and called it good. And part of what Sabbath means is not just to refrain from planting and harvesting one day of the week, but to let your fields rest one year every seven. Don't squeeze every last bit of use or value out of a resource and then abandon it forever. We are called to be good stewards of the earth, and that means that we need to help the earth to heal and recover and be able to grow back. Don't work your animals to death. Let livestock rest. God created all the animals of the earth and the sea and the sky and called them good, even raccoons for some reason. And part of what Sabbath means is to care for them and allow them to rest. This commandment is one of the earliest records of concern for animal welfare that we have, fun fact. Don't work people to death. Let your workers rest. God created all the people of the world and called them not just good, but very good. And part of what Sabbath means is to allow your household to rest. Whatever family or servants or staff or laborers or contractors or workers or employees that you are responsible for. As far as you are able, make an opportunity for all the people in your community to have a day of rest, whether they're part of your family or even your culture whether they're part of your profession or even your social class, whether they worship alongside you or even if their beliefs are completely different than yours, whether they are the most productive members of the workforce or even if they're too young or too old or if they're struggling. The fourth commandment is a vision of equality that we are called to work towards creating because of the way we love and remember and honor God. Everyone and everything deserves a chance to rest on the Sabbath. But what does it mean to rest on the Sabbath? The word rest probably makes us think about like a Sunday afternoon nap or an evening spent binge watching Star Trek, my plans for the day. But since we're not talking about literal sleep and we're not talking about just chilling or being lazy, or about not doing anything in particular, it might be helpful to ask how we could set aside a Sabbath day to become refreshed or renewed or reinvigorated rather than rested. So what would it look like if we set aside one day when we didn't go to work or do homework or fill quotas or do a job for pay? Even if you genuinely love your job, I hope you do, what would it look like if you did not do it just one day a week? What would it look like if you could spend an entire day being yourself 
not a surgeon or a teacher or a flight attendant or an administrator or an engineer or a social worker, but just you. So I guess what we're really getting down to is yet another question. What is the most important thing in your life? What do you want your life to be about? Who or what is at the heart of what you want to be? What is the most important thing in your life? But then there is another question that we must also ask. What do you spend the most time doing? What do you make the most time for? How much overlap is there between those answers? What makes you feel refreshed or reinvigorated or inspired? What is something you do that you always feel better after doing? What are some of the smaller moments in your life that have been the most meaningful? How can you spend your Sabbath day doing more of those things? Our answers to those questions are probably not all going to align perfectly. I'm sure there are many Sabbath practices that might be meaningful to some people and deeply tedious to others. But setting aside a Sabbath day acknowledges that each of us is beloved of God, and each of us finds renewal in different ways. That being said, I did make some notes on things that might be Sabbath practices we could try. What makes you feel inspired? Maybe it's creating something beautiful, or gardening, or learning something new. What gives you energy? Maybe it's doing something that benefits your physical or mental health. What makes you feel closer to God? Maybe it's volunteering, or reading, or studying scripture, or spending time in silence, or meditation, or prayer, or keeping a gratitude journal. What makes you feel more connected? Maybe it's spending time with your family of origin or your chosen family, meeting up with someone in person, calling someone who lives farther away, making plans for a gathering. Maybe as part of that quality time, you might commit to putting your phones away during meals or time together. Maybe as part of that quality time, you might turn off your television or computer or gaming system or whatever other technology so that you can be fully present. What makes you feel like a day is different than other days? Maybe it's doing something special, whatever that means to you. Maybe it's as simple as keeping one day of your week free of meetings or Zoom calls or appointments or shopping. Maybe it's spending the day at church. Maybe it's making time for a particular relationship, or surprising someone, or expressing yourself in a way you aren't able to do the rest of the week. Maybe it's as modern as logging out of email or social media for the day. Maybe it's as old-fashioned as just spending time outdoors. Those are just some examples off the top of my head, really, and I'm sure that any of you could add to that list. Like I said earlier, I am not great at this. And believe me, I am very well aware of how hard it can be to turn your brain off work mode or stop doing something that seems really important. It can be hard to make time for things that feel like they aren't productive, or for things that don't have monetary value, or for things that can feel too personal or trivial to focus on when you could be doing something bigger. Even so, remember the Sabbath and set it apart from the rest of your week. Remember to let yourself be inspired. Remember to let yourself dream. Remember to make time for God. Remember to make time for people you love. Remember to make time for yourself so that on the other days, you can maintain the energy and passion to keep loving God and loving your neighbors. Don't forget where you came from, or who is important to you, or that you are a part of something bigger. Don't let yourself give up or be worked to death, 
or check out of your relationships or stop caring about others. God created you and called you not just good, but very good. Not for what you can do, but for who you are. On the Sabbath day, find your own way to love God and to love your neighbors with all of who you are. All of the passions, the scars, the skills, the dreams, the creativity, the uniqueness, all of what makes you, you. What is the most important thing in your life? God invites us to remember the Sabbath and set it aside so that we can have more time to do exactly that.